Okay, well here's the second of a couple of little short videos about verifying trig identities. This example that I'm going to use for this little video here is also out of the textbook. It's example number four on page 531 if you want to check it out. It says 2 times the tangent of x times secant of x equals 1 minus, or, sorry, excuse me, 1 over 1 minus sine x minus 1 over 1 plus sine x. It's kind of hard to say all that stuff. But anyway, it's definitely a more complicated looking identity. And in working with trig identities, we generally pick the side of the equation that's more complicated and try to simplify it down. There's, that's generally easier than working the other way, trying to take a simple expression like 2 tan x secant x and trying to complicate it to look like the other fractions. But so we'll take a look at the right side of this equation, these two fractions, and try to simplify them as much as we can, see what that does for us. So the first thing I notice is that I've got two, denom two different denominators here, one minus sine x and one plus sine x. There's no common factors there. The common denominator for those two fractions is simply the product of those two denominators. So there's my common denominator there. It's just the product of those two uh, smaller denominators up above. Now, what I have to do is to change the numerators so that uh, I can combine them into one fraction here. And fortunately, that's not too bad because each original numerator is just a 1. All right, I have a 1 here. So uh, all I have to do is multiply the 1 times 1 plus sine x, and that gives me, obviously, 1 plus sine x. And then also over here on the, this other fraction, uh, I'm going to say 1 times 1 minus sine x. Um, but I have this subtraction sign in here, so I have to bring that down. So minus, and then a very important little detail here, especially when I'm subtracting, I want to use parentheses. So it's 1 minus sine x here inside the parentheses. And uh, I want to take a look at that for a second and just focus on this big old fraction here in the next slide. Okay, so to just look at the right side of that equation there, um, let's take a look at what happens when I take away these parentheses on the top of the fraction. Um, I'll have uh, the same thing on the bottom, of course, but on the top I'll have 1 plus sine x minus 1 plus sine x, right? The minus, uh, the subtraction sign right here, when it's uh, being applied to this minus sine x, means I'm subtracting a negative. So that's 1 plus sine x. And so, uh, just to leave the denominator alone for a second, my final fraction here, when I simplify the numerator, is going to be 1 minus 1, so that's nothing. And then I just have 2, I have sine x plus sine x. That's 2 sine x. So 2 times sine x over my uh, big denominator here, 1 minus sine x times 1 plus sine x. And the next step will be to take a look at that denominator and see if there's some way we can simplify that denominator. So let's just look at that and focus on that part now. So notice something about this denominator. It's 1 minus sine x times 1 plus sine x. It's sort of like this form that we've seen so many times in algebra, a minus b times a plus b. You've seen that a million times, and you know that this equals what? You know what this equals. This equals a squared minus b squared. So this original fraction that I've got here up, uh, up above is really just in the same form. It's 1 minus something times 1 plus something. Well, that's going to give us when we multiply those two things out using the FOIL method or just using our kind of uh, algebraic shortcut there, the denominator of this fraction is just going to be 1 minus sine squared x. Well, that's pretty nice because we know that 1 minus sine squared x equals cosine squared x. So this right side of the equation now simplifies down to 2 sine x over cosine squared x. We're still not at the point where we have the uh, 2 tangent secant x as we started off with on the left side, but we are getting simpler. So the next step that we're going to do use to break this, uh, this fraction here, 2 sine x over cosine squared x, up it may look a little strange at first, but if you really think about what's going on here, I'm multiplying on the top 
2 times sine x. On the bottom, I've got cosine squared times, I'm sorry, excuse me, I've got cosine x times cosine x. But I can write all of these things as kind of like separate fractions all multiplied together. In fact, I can take the 2 out all together, 2 times, then I have this sine over cosine squared. Well, sine over cosine squared is the same thing as sine over x, or sorry, excuse me, sine x over cosine x times 1 over cosine x. Now, that may seem like a, an odd thing to do, but this is kind of how we approach some of these problems now, is trying to break things apart into their smallest components. And now look what happens. When I do that, I see sine over cosine. That's tangent. So 2 times tangent x. And then 1 over cosine, well, that's the same thing as secant x. So secant x. And now what we have is the original identity, 2 times tangent x times secant x. If we go back to our very first slide here, where we started off, you can see there's our, the left side of the equation, 2 tangent x times secant x. And we can see that finally, after doing all of that stuff, oops, one, we end up with 2 tangent x secant x. So here we go. We're done. QED.